Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader .com, uh Tuesday night, right? Tuesday night edition. Hope everybody is doing well. If you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, uh, please support the channel, like, subscribe, uh, share, all you know, do all that social media stuff that everybody tells you. Again, I recently in the last year or so I uh, learned all these things to say. Thank you very much, Kenyon. Thank you very much, Kyler. Uh, but anyway, guys, hope everybody is doing uh, well. So let's talk about the tape, right? Um, so we knew going into today's session, two things. We kind of talked about that on the video last night. We knew that 369 was the bottom of the channel, held three times on the QQQs. We also know that 378 to the upper channel uh, is to the top of the range. So the question was, can the market do anything or sustain any type of momentum prior to the FOMC? FOMC uh, starts... Uh, well, actually, comes out with their uh, Fed uh, rate decision tomorrow. Some, you know, most uh, analysts believe that it is going to be a very, uh, a very stale event. Whether it's uh, putting uh, the rising hikes on hold or maybe a twenty-five basis point, but whatever it is, it is right. It is we can't control it. Uh, there's nothing we could do about it. There's no point to sitting uh, discussing with somebody on social media about it for nine hours. It's out of our hands. Uh, but we do know certain things. We do control our emotions. We do control our process. And we do our control our uh, ability to stay solvent. That's based on uh, process. So we knew that 369 was there. Uh, we, we waited for that 369. It broke that 369. We'll get to individual pivots in a second. And gave a pretty good trade, right? We discussed these levels yesterday on the video. Uh, the Qs broke down initially. Uh, the Spies broke down we talked about the levels and the spies there as well on uh yesterday it broke down initially but the point is the market is doing exactly the same thing it's been doing for the last three weeks matter of fact uh we were short the cues today off that 369 break uh everything's going good they were going down to it went down to 366 80s uh, we were down to a runner and i made a joke about it but it wasn't really even a joke it was kind of like this has been kind of going on so i said imagine as the cues were taking out the lows, I go, I could definitely see the market rallying right back and the cues reclaiming back to 369 level. Again, I, I didn't think it was going to happen. Deep inside, subconsciously, I must have had because I said it and yada, 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 here we are. So if you look at the 60 minute view on the cues, right? It was a big, beautiful move. They lost at 369. Everything got killed and then blah, blah, blah. We started rallying right back. So it really does show you for the last three, you know, three, three and a half weeks that every single time the market has you know, gave an indication it was finally going to break in one direction or another. And again, it, it's it's taking the, you know, the trades outside of it, uh, uh, outside of the equation. It really does show you how quickly the market can kind of bounces back, both long and short. So it's a very, very unique market. Uh, we've, we've been kind of bouncing up and down above and below the 50-day moving average. You've been watching this video, uh, this broadcast for the last even like two, three weeks. You kind of know uh, what we've been talking about here. And the, the most important part is as good of a job that the Qs reclaim back uh, the, the, the the big 369 level on the close. Again, keep this in mind. We're still, this is all happening still uh, below the 50-day moving average. Uh, obviously, the big catalyst is going to be FLMC. Depending on what they say, we're either going to start climbing back towards the top of the channel here or we're going to start losing uh, today's low. Again, we will be ready uh, for both sides of the equation. But I, again, I, I can see how, not necessarily on the day trading side, but I could definitely see if you're exclusively a swing trader, right? Whether it's long or short bias. But if you are if you are a, a swing trader, it's a very, very tough tape. Incredibly tough. I mean, we I, I selectively uh, swing trade, you know, primarily earnings plays, earnings low plays, uh, momentum plays. That's, you know, that's you know, a couple of day play. But I could see if you're establishing a longer term position here one way or another, it's very, very frustrating because again, every single time, like even here, you know, every single time we look like we're about to break out, the market completely died. Every single time here, we look like we're about to break down, the market rallied again. So I could see, I could see the frustration and I hear a lot of people talking about it, but it's just the market that you're in. There's nothing you could do about it. Guys, again, remember when you 
filled out your first brokerage account. Now, I don't care if you're trading on, on the retail level, institutional level, whatever the case may be, you're going to find a lot of bull market activity, bear market activity, um, distribution type of activity, or AKA chop, or a market that just doesn't make any sense. Guess what? This is a market that doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't make a difference. You know, our job is to make as much sense as possible. That's why we get ready for the next trading day, not based on news, not based on hypotheticals, not based on an event that hasn't even come into fruition. It's based on the previous night's research. I continue to echo this, kind of bring the point home every single day. Are you going to be perfect? No. Are you going to be wrong a lot? Absolutely. But the key is to be wrong small. We, we have this great uh, saying in the webinar, right? Because we, 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 we see these levels as so important. We, we do understand what has to happen off these levels. I, I say it every single day. Your job is to lose pennies, make dollars, right? Because the reason why I say that is, and of course, sometimes it's, not, it's out of your control. You're going to lose dollars as well, especially when you're trading beta. But the point is, when you're looking at a very specific level, it has to price approve or price, uh, it, it needs to either, either price improve uh, or price implode in that area, or you know that area of the, of the market, of the, of the chart is completely compromised. And that's why we always talk about lose pennies, make dollars. And it's not even a point of, you know, looking for that perfect market, that market that doesn't exist. But we have to do our best every single day as traders. Remember, guys, every single trader, unless you're in La La Land's trading on social media, right? Every trader is looking at the market exactly the same way. There's there's no difference between your the way you're looking at the market, the way I'm looking at the market. The only way I, the only reason I'm looking at the market might be a little bit different than you're looking at the market is I'm you know I'm doing this going on year 25. You might be doing this going on on month 25. So that's that's going to change in time. Believe me, it, nobody's you know nobody's different, nobody's special. You know that reading type of the market, reading type of scenario, reading type of uh, intervals is only going to get easier, more clear as time goes by. So don't put a lot of pressure uh, on yourself trying to figure things out. But going into tomorrow, uh, look, we we could definitely have a scenario a little bit of a slower open. Uh, prior, maybe even a slower morning, because again, there is day two in a row, we haven't seen any major bets one way or another. Usually you see uh, institutional money flows start to position themselves uh, either one direction or the other. We're not seeing that, right? We're not getting that now. Maybe as we get closer uh, to the FOMC announcement, they'll start putting in areas of interest. But more important is these are levels we have to kind of know going into tomorrow's session. Obviously, today's low is going to be important. Uh, 366.80, if it starts building below 366.80, today's low, yeah, we're going to go lower, right? But the key is if they can start reclaiming back, and again, assuming the announcement is taken uh, very well, the key is if they can start reclaiming back 72, where you see that, guys? That's kind of, that's the 50-day moving average. That's what we lost. So if the Qs can reclaim back 72, especially on the close, that will be a bullish sign. So we have 72 to the upside, we have 366.80 to the downside on the queues, and that is your parameters uh, for uh, tomorrow. Going into uh, today, again, like I said in last night's video, it's not that I was sell biased, right? But again, when stocks are closing at the bottom of the range every single day, how can you possibly turn around and go, I love that stock as a long? If 99% of the stocks are taking out bottom channels, well, again, why are you trying to look for that one diamond in the rough? Go with the flow, right? Don't try to go against... Uh, the current. So we talked about it, right? So here are the pivots of the day. Uh, a couple of trades were, you know, a couple of trades were just cash flow. Uh, the queues were good. The spies were good. But let's talk about it. So Tesla broke down yesterday on the negative uh, Goldman Sachs comments trimming its estimates. Uh, there was a pivot today, 263.75. It confirms uh, it can get hit more. Uh, the only problem, and it, we, we were conscious of it. We were definitely conscious of it. Uh, there wasn't a lot of room because there was a next rising support here of 361. So if you look at the 60 minute view, here is the whole channel here, right? Excuse me. Here is the whole channel here of 263.75 and it traded right to the next support. Again, that's the whole premise of uh, the PS60 theory. You stock straight from demand to demand, the supply to supply, and it got to the next demand. It basically gave about $1.50, $1.70 move. Not nothing crazy, but again, we weren't looking for a big trade on Tesla, at least for today. Uh, QQQ was definitely the big one of the day. Uh, we talked about it on last night's video. Hell, I think even the the thumb uh, the thumb tab on on social media said, "Hey, watch the 369 level." So 369 continues to be major support held three times. Uh, and again, it got hit. That was a beautiful tr trade. They didn't give it up right away. Okay, they did not uh, in the first you know 10 15 minutes. They were holding this thing up, holding this thing up. You know, you know 369, 369, 30s, 369. 
369.20s, 368.80s, 369.20s, and they finally gave it up. Uh, gave about a two, two and a half dollar move on the Qs. Really nice move there. Uh, that was definitely a big one for the day. Uh, letter U never confirmed. Uh, NVIDIA never confirmed on the way up. Uh, Domo, I started an initial position today uh, in the 950s. It just it didn't close above. I wanted to, I wanted to, you know just an entry position. I, I never you know uh, I never um, uh, I never added because it never closed below. So uh, I wound up losing about 20 cents there. Not a big deal. Uh, GT, I'm still watching. Uh, OSTK, we, we talked about on last night's video, OSTK 1869, if it builds below, can flush, right? Here it was OSTK. It took out uh, it took out the 1869 we talked about on last night's video, the earnings lows went all the way down to 1790. Good job for all you guys who took it. And the last one was SPIES, uh, 4230, if it builds below, it can flush. Again, we, I gave you those levels uh, yesterday on the video. Uh, for, it took out 442, traded all the way down uh, to below uh, 440, and then everything just started snapping back. So uh, again, we're kind of in a little bit of a holding pattern um, until the FOMC gets out of the way. Uh, our job every single day is try to find some of that research from the night before so we can get that measured potential move ahead of the event. Uh, let me give you guys a couple of charts that I do like. Uh, let me start off on the upside. Uh, watch this WW. And it is Weight Watchers, probably one of the nicer looking charts out there. Uh, it's been sitting in this range since the end of July. Keep an eye on this thing for tomorrow. Again, does it have to confirm tomorrow? Nothing has to happen. But again, as we say every single video, don't you need to be prepared, right? So Weight Watchers, keep an eye on this thing for the top of the range. If it starts getting above the top of the range, maybe this thing could wake up. Uh, Meta, just in case we rally tomorrow, uh, actually did okay today. It reclaimed back the five-day moving average. So if it confirms back tomorrow, if we do rally into the, into the FOMC, this thing does have a lot of room up. So keep an eye on that as well. From the flip side, right? Again, we always have to be ready on both sides of the market. Uh, look at Carvana, guys. Uh, some you know some good put buying came into this thing. It held the bottom of the range here twice. You see that? It held it literally twice. It was the same low from September uh, the eighth, and today was the same low. If it starts losing the bottom channel here, it could start moving back down to the 50-day moving average. Uh, Roblox uh, is starting to get heavy again. Uh, it blew up on earnings. We had a beautiful earnings uh, play. It's getting very, very close here. If it starts losing the Bollinger Band, uh, this thing can get hit as well. And NVIDIA, right? NVIDIA, you know, I was looking for a potential dead cat bounce. They obviously never took out the previous day's range. And it, it held this Bollinger Band. So if the, if the FOMC decision is bad, I, I want to see this thing. If they can start confirming back down, on this Bollinger Band on NVIDIA, it could get hit as well. So that's it, guys. I, we are ready for tomorrow. We got some longs. We got some shorts. Again, don't be afraid to be wrong, okay? You have to have an opinion. You have to have uh, a thought of process. The key question is, are you afraid to be wrong in front of your peers, or are you responsible enough to say to yourself, look, I'm okay to be wrong. We're wrong every single day in every aspect of this business. The question is, can you be wrong theoretically or can you be wrong financially? That's two different things. And that's why there's two sides of the market waiting for confirmation. Nice and orderly, nice and patient. Guys, God bless, stay blessed, and I will see you all tomorrow. Take care, guys.